QE3 is still on the table. It's premature to declare victory, so said ben, ben Bernanke in his press conference that just ended here on Mean Street. With me today, Neil Lipschutz, managing editor of Dow Jones Newswires, Brenda Cronin, big shot here, I don't, I'm not even sure what her title is, and David Jones, who should be joining us from, via Skype from Fort Myers, Florida, where I'm sure the weather is better than it is here in New York. Former Fed economist and Fed watcher David Jones. David, QE3 is still on the table. That's the punchline. The markets seem to like it. Stocks are staying high. What is your take on, on today's press conference? Yeah. My take is, yes, it's on the table, but just barely. Um, I thought the Fed chairman, uh, actually in response to John Hilsenath's question on inflation, was clear um, he's uh, aiming at it. 2% inflation target, um, it's a little bit slippery in the sense that he aims at it over the medium term, maybe the next two to three years, but uh, he's not ready to raise that target in, in connection with another question asked, and um, I sense that the Fed chairman was defending the Fed's current position, that is, they're going to keep the funds rate uh, unchanged at that 0 to 0.25% range out through late 2014, and that's what the chairman's defending. I thought he was uh, very cautious about any QE3, um, and certainly took most opportunities to say, you see moderate growth, uh, he's happy with this highly accommodative policy the Fed has, he defended it in terms of all the things he's done, QE1, QE2, forward guidance. So. Yes, QE3 is there, but just barely. Right, and my take, for what it's worth, is you know he's walking he's walking a tightrope here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a, there's a fine line between telling the market what they want to hear and telling them too much. Neil, your take? Yeah, I agree. I, I think that over the last number of weeks, we've got a little bit of chatter, including from some of the regional Fed bank presidents, about the inflation rate and concern. It's, maybe he's taken that into consideration. Uh, as well. But yeah, I think, again, you know, uh, if you've got critics who think you're not easy enough and you've got critics who think you're too easy, you're probably in the right place. And, and he has, uh, as we've said, he has shown himself to be pretty much on target in his own uh, outlooks for the economy and for inflation. Brenda, the, uh, the Fed chairman suggested that the economy, economic recovery is still slow. Recently, we've had some economic data that supports a little bit of a kind of temporary slowdown. He talked about the slight bulge in gas prices. Is this economy in full recovery, or is this still slow, 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 slow? Oh, I and I know you're negative, so I know you're going to give me a negative answer. Uh, I'm afraid I have to just be true to form. It certainly is in recovery at an incredibly slow pace. That's precisely what uh, what the chairman said at the end of this uh, this press conference. That his biggest concern about the this the most frustrating aspect of this recovery has been how slow it has been, and that that. Uh, you know, we get things like today's durable goods orders, which were not good at all. We get unemployment that started off pretty well at the start of the year and then has truly slowed down in, you know, March with the early April report. So all of these things, it is absolutely sort of two steps forward, a half step back, two steps forward. David, does the Fed really focus on the unemployment rate or on the jobs numbers? Do they take into account things like excellent corporate profits? Do they take into account... Uh, a lot of the, you know, the rebound in manufacturing that we're seeing. What goes on at those meetings when they, when they debate this stuff? Well, I think it, not in this press conference, but the one we talked about uh, in the earlier one back in January, he, Bernanke gave us three key indicators, which uh, I always stick with. And uh, he said, first and foremost, the employment numbers, uh, including the payroll numbers and by implication, certainly also the household unemployment rate. He said secondly, and it was interesting when he mentioned these so-called indicators, he said business spending was, um, and all the indicators of that, including today's weaker uh, capital, uh, new orders for non-defense capital goods, um, less aircraft, which was also on the softer side. And finally, he pays a lot of attention, he said, to the confidence indicators, which was somewhat surprising to me, presumably consumer confidence and business confidence. So um, 
I just look at him in terms of those things. But if you want to know what I think he's really watching, it is simply the pace of the recovery and, um, and, and how much that's bringing down, whether that unemployment rate is staying on a downward path. As long as that's the case in the Fed's forecast, uh, the Fed chairman is going to be happy with this highly accommodative policy. If those things change, uh, at some point, perhaps the Fed will change. Neil, what about politics? Does the, I mean, does the Fed chairman care at all about the November re-election? Does he have to? Do other people around the table at the FOMC say, you know what? We, we just got to keep the, stip, the ship steady as she goes because we got in a re-election camp. We don't want to get in the middle of that. Uh, obviously, I only know what they say. And, and, and I think to a person on, on the committee, they would say politics don't matter at all. Um, I would just say, and, I, and it really is a coincidental factor here, not a causal factor, that there is reasonable rationale to stay just where they are, probably through the elections. And, you know, uh, that can't make somebody upset, I would imagine. But, I, you know, my honest view, and it's a guess, when all said and done, is that, that uh, political considerations don't consciously play a real role. Right. I would agree with that. I think one thing I wanted to mention that was striking about today's press conference was uh, Bernanke's uh, very, um, it struck me, very personal defense. Uh, right. When he was asked initially Early about on, personal right. attacks and he said he has been consistent throughout right. uh, with his recommendations for the past 10, right. 15 years. And that was that was a little backhanded way of, of, of going ag against a, a uh, well, a Paul Krugman column that I believe was written recently in which Krugman said, geez, Mr. Bernanke, when you were analyzing the situation in Japan, you said one thing, now you're doing something different. Did you, did you catch that one, David? And, and as an economist, was that, was that just uh, too much uh, inside baseball, or is there something real going on there? It, it's kind of hard to read emotion in our Fed chairman. Um, uh, I keep thinking of that movie, Too Big to Fail, and that uh, fellow that was even opening up to every meeting. Uh, Seen. Uh, Bernanke is not an emotional person, but I sense some emotion in uh, answer, indirect answer to Krugman. Uh, Bernanke totally rejected that view. Uh, if anything, he said, look, um, I pulled out all the stops in trying to pull this economy back from the abyss, including all these unconventional large-scale asset purchases, QE1, QE2, forward guidance. He went through the whole litany and uh, made it absolutely clear that uh, the way he's handled the situation and in fact got some inflation, not deflation, uh, made clear that uh, he viewed his policies as clearly superior to those in the case of the Japanese. And, and I sensed at least uh, he felt some emotion about that. Sudeep is joining us from Washington. Sudeep, this 2% number. Is it just a coincidence that that's the upper bound of all these projections? I mean, if it was suddenly 2.2% was the upper bound, then it'd be a little easier for Bernanke to dismiss. Is, are they fudging the numbers down there? Well, this is how they make their forecast. They actually do think that inflation is going to be a temporary issue. And these are forecasts that stretch over uh, points later in the year. So you have to be aware of that. It's not necessarily right now and given how much uh, gasoline prices, for instance, have risen already, it's likely that they're not going to go surging barring some external event in Iran or somewhere else. But uh, the Fed chairman was very clear. I was surprised by how comfortable he was with, uh, with inflation. He, the statement obviously said that they see this as being temporary, but he seemed to be basically dismiss the concern about inflation being a, a, a near-term problem right now, even though he did use it a little bit in his justification for not uh, doing additional action with a, another round of QE. Let me just ask David the same question, yes or no. David, are they fudging the numbers to get this 2% upper bound? It's a remarkable coincidence, isn't it? Uh, it's interesting. Remember when we had those so-called long-term inflation forecasts for the headline PC deflator, remember, uh, I thought it was more legitimate to think in terms of that I think it was a 1.7 to 2 percent range, and I note that after the January statement, which declared for all the world to hear that the Fed now had a, in, a an official formal 2 percent inflation target, that that just jumped in to really take the place of that long-term mandate consistent range, which I actually like more than this uh, 
edict that somehow officially our target is two percent. Thank you, David. Now, Brenda, I know you're you're always down on the economy, so I'm going to paint. I'm going to I'm going to paint the scenario for you, okay? And this scenario has unemployment staying relatively high, but consumer spending, the market's doing well. Inflation running a little hot. Can you accept an economy that does okay for an extended period of time, but unemployment doesn't go down? Isn't that a possible scenario? Absolutely, it's a possible scenario. I would advise you to look to Friday's first pass at the first quarter GDP report to see a pretty good gauge of where we are initially. Okay. And that, then the week after that, we will have unemployment. And I think those are two things the Fed is really going to be paying yep. attention to. Neil, come on. Are you with me on this? Uh, it, it certainly, it's certainly, I think, interestingly enough, if that scenario comes through, which, sure, I mean, we've sort of seen that, haven't we, to date, um, it's a political issue for, for President Obama, and it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue for the Congress that seems paralyzed about, you know, what the chairman uh, right. suggested they do, you know, short-term keep things, but get, give us a long-term fiscal program. Okay, Neil, hang on just one second. Jay, are we wrapping this? Okay, we're going to say goodbye to David Jones for joining us. Thank you very much, David. As usual, great insight. Joining us from Fort Myers, Florida. Are we thanking Sudeep? Or is Sudeep sticking with us? Sudeep. We should always thank Sudeep. Sudeep, what do you think, what do you, you think about the press guy? He's doing a pretty good job, this Ben Bernanke, don't you think? I know you have yeah, to say that because you're covering him, but I mean, I, I think in terms of the last three some odd years, he's gotten, you know, a little bit not too hot, not too cold. He's, he's kind of walked a straight line, which is not easy to do as a Fed chairman, is it? Well, Evan, he's learned how to dodge questions. I guess going before Congress the number of times he has allows him to do that. And in, this is his fifth press conference. He's practically a pro at this right now. What struck me is how uh, almost defensive he was when he kept getting question after question about doing another round of QE. And his message was basically back off. And that was the message to Paul Krugman as well, that, uh, look, we've done a lot and we're going we're gonna to keep rates low. That's actually a very significant action already and don't keep asking for more until there's some sign that the economy is really taking a, a dive and that we would need more so he's really uh, he really wants the the current fed policy to stay in place and he was very firm on that let it stay in place let's see how it works but uh back off and stop asking for more yeah well the, the reality i think sudeep is he's probably tired of you know the market the stock market only wants to know that qe3 is still a possibility and so once he already said that early on he couldn't believe that they kept on asking about it we got to run sudeep ready joining us from washington thank you very much brenda cronin neil lipschitz thank you very much for being here